<laughs> Live from uh, Melia Salinas, good morning from Lanzarote. Nothing is better than a swim in the morning. Uh, the water in the swimming pool is a little bit chilly, but it's so pleasant. Uh, and I look at the sky and I think uh, even the sky is a little bit upset that uh, I'm approaching the end of my stay at Melia Salinas. It's quite uh, cloudy and the wind is still playing a little bit with us. But uh, because uh, uh, I told you that uh, Melia Salinas is more than a hotel. It's uh, a place where each, uh, each stone, uh, each piece of this building has its own history. I decided this morning to offer you a guided tour of this absolutely amazing building. The only thing that unfortunately I cannot show you uh, as I want uh, is um, the excellent level of customer service, the professionalism, the love, the dedication, the passion of the team at Melia Salinas. But let me take you the guided tour of Melia Salinas. The hotel uh, is located on Costa Teguise. Uh, was uh, Cesar Manrique the one who gave uh, the name to this desert place uh, as uh, um, homage to the old capital of uh, Lanzarote, Teguise. Um, even the name of the hotel is very, very interesting, the, um, the Melia Salinas. Uh, the reason uh, it's once again linked with the old history of this place uh, was uh, a salt uh, work uh, located in this area. Uh, to explain technical terms, I, I didn't know myself, I had to look on the internet. Uh, in old days, there were areas where the, uh, the ocean water was trapped, uh, could not go back into the ocean. Uh, the water evaporates and after that they extracted the salt from there. Um, actually, uh, in the garden of my villa, you still can see the only remain a windmill used in that old days. And uh, Salinas uh, salt work, uh, that gave the name to the hotel. Manrique had returned from New York in the late 1960s, just as package tourism was starting to take off uh, in, in Spain. He was deeply, deeply concerned that Lanzarote could face a concrete invasion, similar to the high-rise development started to engulf the costas and the other Canary Islands. I believe that we are witnessing a historic moment where the huge danger to the environment is so evident that we must conceive a new responsibility with respect to the future, Cesar Manrique said. As a result, Manrique urged restraint and sought to influence development on the island as much as possible. Manrique envisioned creating a low-rise luxury resort in a previous deserted spot, um, as I told you, uh, called uh, Costa Teguise, named as the seaside uh, sister to the ancient uh, capital of Teguise, which is uh, some miles uh, away up to the road. The Gran Melia Salinas was to be the first incarnation of this plan and the first building in the resort. Amelia Salinas, Manrique hoped that he would give a very good example, a stylish example for future development. And as a result, the hotel still bears many of Manrique's signature design touches. As I told you so many times this week, the hotel is something of a museum. It's in the Right. Thanks to the involvement of the island-born artist and architect Cezanne Manrique, who designed the building in collaboration with Manrique-based architect Fernando Higueras in 1976.
Arriving in Melia Salinas for Shurio Heart will be stolen by the botanical centerpiece of the hotel, that is with no doubts uh, the most impressive feature. As here, uh, Manrique designed a lush, breathtaking indoor botanical garden that serves both as uh, homage to a traditional Canarian patio found in many older island homes and a much copied talking point that has been replicated in other hotels all around the world. Indeed, uh, Manrique and Higuera's work was so impressive that the hotel was awarded the International Award for Architecture in 1978. Greeting uh, the guests uh, from the entrance, the lavish botanical garden, complemented by the soft hypnotic hum of the natural stone waterfalls, it's uh, a centerpiece, it's the heart of the hotel. Over the years, a multitude of plants has been introduced into the hotel resort, lining all four stories of this complex, instilling a pleasant freshness to the city. Higueras and Marike work at Melia Salinas wasn't always uh, a nice, pleasant collaboration. They had a lot of debate about how the hotel will look like at, at the end. And I have here a very, very good example. Uh, the architect wanted both uh, patio uh, hills to be covered. Uh, Manrique thought that that is not something uh, natural. The plants will need natural light, not filtered, filtered uh, through, through glass. And therefore, uh, after a long debate, they reach a compromise. Media Salinas lobby has two uh, atriums. Uh, the beautiful botanical garden is split in uh, two parts. And the first part, it's with no cover, and you can see it here, the beautiful sky and the natural light engulfing the plants. And the second patio, as the architect wanted, it's covered with uh, a special type of glass which give an absolutely beautiful light to this lovely botanical garden. Originally, Higueras wanted to have uh, all these little lagoons uh, in the atrium full of fish. But uh, Cesar Manrique considered the fish a danger for the local plants. And therefore, they reached another compromise. Only one fish will live here at Melia Salinas. His name is Carlos. You will see him in a second. It's a very interesting story that uh, Giske, um, uh, the deputy uh, hotel manager, assistant hotel manager, uh, told me when we were visiting uh, this area. Uh, when the renovation of the hotel took place and this uh, area was under construction, what they did, they removed Carlos in a water tank, a safe water tank, take him away and return him safely when the work was done. Let me introduce you to Carlos. Uh, the view of the atrium is impressive from the moment when you enter the hotel. Unfortunately, all of us, when we arrive, we are quite anxious to check in, to get our luggage into, well, yes, to get our luggage into uh, into our room and so on. So, no, everybody has time to admire the lobby uh, here. And therefore, uh, I was talking with uh, the general manager and Ernesto, and he suggested whenever you have time after check-in, in one of those days when you uh, stay at Melia Salinas, uh, just try to recreate your steps uh, when you arrive at the hotel. You enter through the main, uh, main door, uh, walk all the, the lobby where the reception is, and stop in front of the atrium. And you will see that between the plants, you can see somewhere behind, right there, the ocean. It's a breathtaking view that you need to experience at least once uh, when you are here at Melia Sali. Uh, 
another very interesting story about, uh, about this botanical garden. Uh, Ernesto Guerra, the general manager, when he decided a couple of years ago to uh, do a full refurbishment of the hotel, had in front of him the difficult task to recreate this uh, beautiful place. Uh, the idea was that during the years, uh, the plants they were very, very tall, and actually they were covering uh, the beautiful view of, uh, of the ocean. Um, and uh, Ernesto had the idea uh, to take photographs and put numbers on each stone, on each plant, to be sure that when they will rebuild uh, this space will look exactly like Cesar Manrique wanted in, at the end of 1970s. And to be honest, the idea of cutting all the plants and uh, give uh, freedom to that beautiful view was an excellent one. Cesar Manrique artistic style is best observed in this very spacious swimming pool, uh, lagoon uh, type area. The exquisite balance between uh, light and shadows, the playful shapeness of the palm trees, the use of natural stone for the floors and the clever incorporation of traditional Canarian uh, island style, architectural style, elements um, uh, which all nourish the singular aesthetic of this stunning space. This rustic beauty, particularly in the stone uh, floors, for example, uh, many seem somewhat at odds with the resulting comfort of the area. balance uh, between light and shadows, the playful shapes of the palm trees, the use of natural stone for the floors and the clever incorporation of traditional Canary Island architectural elements all nourish the singular aesthetic of this stunning space. This uh, rustic beauty, particularly in the stone floors, for example, may seem somewhat at odds with uh, the resulting comfort of the area. to highlight and one of the keynotes of uh, Manrique's public art is the way that this architect has capitalized on the strategic location of uh, Melia Salinas directly on the beach to spread out the spaces for relaxation and quiet contemplation all around the swimming pool. was built at the end of 1970s, uh, a peak of the period called in architecture brutalism. Uh, everything was uh, massive, was uh, grey, was dominant, was concrete. Um, Higuera, the architect who created Melia Salinas, uh, wanted to be of course in trend uh, with this light, but he wanted to smooth a little bit uh, everything around. And uh, mm, uh, he took two absolutely amazing, from the architectural point of view, amazing decisions. First of all, no, the co no color of the concrete around Melia Salinas. Everything is painted in white. And on top of that, trying to be, bring a little bit of personality, a little bit of warmth in the entire construction, he decided uh, to give this impression that uh, the walls, they are not concrete. They are um, having manual touch uh, pieces of, of work. There are some lines, it's an impression of, uh, of um, uh, brick stones and so on. The interesting is that, uh, talking with an architect, uh, I found that if somebody will want to build something as big as Melia Salinas today, will be impossible from the financial point of view. Will cost um, a huge amount of money and uh, Melia Salinas built in, um, opened in 1976 still have this absolutely amazing touch that you cannot find anywhere else in uh, this um, world of brutalism architectural uh, style building.
with uh, many of Manrique's signature design touches, such as uh, the classical pool area, uh, the, the garden, uh, as well as many of his original works of art. Murals which sit alongside works from other leading Canarian artists, such as Pepe Damaso and Paco Curbello. very interesting thing, uh, things to find about uh, Melia Salinas. Uh, it's enough to ask any of the team members. They love this place. They know every corner. They, love, they know all the little stories and secrets uh, of the hotel. But if you ask something more official, <laughs> in the second atrium, they have the Discovery Center with uh, photos and histories for both the architect and the uh, landscape designer. Uh, you see photos from the moment when they built the hotel at the, the end of the uh, 1970s and very interesting information about the renovation, the recent renovation of the hotel. Discovery Center is a place where you have to come at least once during your stay at Melia Salinas. You see, uh, you have so many reasons uh, to uh, book a holiday here at Melia Salinas because it's a very, very special place. And that's all for this morning. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central European time on YouTube channel Leonard Myron 1969 will be the last episode of, uh, uh, of our live reports from Melia Salinas because <laughs> despite the fact that I don't want to, uh, it's time to go home. So I will see you tomorrow morning. Have a lovely day. Bye.